about today is how to develop views off of an object that have this object for example has no dimensions on it at all we're going to do it in third angle projection so third angle which is the US projection standard okay we're going to respect the cube the cube being the usual front view right view top view so the front of object is here the right side of the object is here the top of the object is there. Here we have our object. Here we have a grid to try to transfer to. And we're going to try to do it some kind of scale reference. First thing you do is put it on your board. Got your T-square. You won't need the 45-45 angle for this project. What you will need is your 30-60-90 triangle. Because that should be, and we'll find out in a minute if it's true, the alignment of this. When I say alignment, you've got your T-square horizontally placed on the board. You have your 30, 60, 90 triangle sliding across it. And you're trying to see if you're going to get a good angle when you're looking at this object. So I'm tilting the paper a little bit so I can get the alignment. That alignment looks good. I'm going to flip my triangle. Make sure I have the 30 there, it's a little off, which means whoever did this drawing didn't quite do it to 30, 30, the standard isometric presentation of a three-dimensional drawing. So it's close, but no cigar. So I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit so I can get a happy compromise to some degree, but we're, we can also do it without the board, okay? If it gets in our way. This, doing the T-square, at least make sure that we make our vertical lines perfect. So I'm going to tilt the paper until I get that. And then the T-square is perfect, a perfect alignment with the grid. Now what I want to do is tape this down. You can use painter's tape because that's really what drafting tape is. Painter's tape is what you want to use. I got drafting tape. Okay. Compliments of Raphael, as well as her board that we're using here today. So I'm uh, cheap and uh, lazy, so I don't want to use a lot of tape. And that's how you want to put all your drawings down, even when you have the nice formal drawings. You don't want to use big swaths of tape. This board should probably have a blotter behind it, but that's for another day. For today, I can still work with it the way it is. The reason I say you want a blotter behind it, because wood has a, a grain to it. And going across, it's okay, but vertically, it'll put little bumps in it. So you might get little waves in your drawings. Okay? But if you, in order to try to assess this object, the first thing you got to do is draw your reference lines so you can get an idea of what this object's gonna look like. So basically, we're putting it in its box, okay? <clears throat> we're lining it up with the lines we have. These front lines we can do, this back edge we can do, but that's it. The back side, we have to think to ourselves how we're gonna get that back. Once I know what angle this is at, there it is. it's not at 30, that's the annoying part, but that's okay. You can actually drag this up the back line is the back of the object. And if I just draw in alignment with that back wall, voila, I get this reference. And I get, as I like to say, X marks the spot. That's the back corner of that object. The nice part is when it comes to this, the, the vertical position, this is vertical. The back corner of the object is right there. I could line that up and voila, that's the back corner. That's the back left corner. This is the back right corner of this object. Okay? Again, when it comes to this, this, where, this is where it's a little annoying because it's not perfect. So I'm, I am fudging it, as I like to say. The fudge method, it works. Lining it up, it is off. But I'm lining it up to this line, and then all I do is slide across. Did you see that? I slide it across. That way when I get to this corner, I find out where the real front corner is, just somewhere around there. Okay? Now, this 
angle here is the same out here. So I can get this front corner here, lining this up, voila. So now I've got my front corners. And then all I do is, as I like to say, connect the dots. When you line these two up, there you go. The first thing that you must do with any object that you're trying to, to figure out is put it in a box. Because that, then you can move to the next step, which is how do I extract the front view off of this, the right view off of this, and the top view off of this. This first thing I gotta do is put it in a box. In the future, mentally, you'll probably be able to do it. Like in your head, you may not literally have to do this. But I it took me a long time to do to get there, so I always did this. And then I would use my color pencils to actually visually identify what's the front, what's the right side, what's the top. So I did an okay job, but you can see that's not perfect. So that's kind of eh, a little messy. So this might, the way that this uh, was drawn might actually have been drawn in perspective angle, which is a cat thing. So whoever had done this drawing wasn't too concerned with somebody using a ruler or actually hand drawing it perhaps, but that's okay. When you deal with customers in the field, you're gonna deal with this kind of imperfection all the time. Your goal though is to get as perfect as you can. So see that, that see how off that is? So somewhere in the middle is the right spot, but it's okay. For our purposes, we're guesstimating. And many times when we do this, the first thing we tell our customer when we give them the drawing is that this drawing is an estimation. Are these dimensions correct? They have to approve it before you build. Got it? Always. Nothing is perfect. We work with ambiguity all day long in the world of engineering. Next, once I have it roughly in a box, which I do, then the idea is what's the front? So let's agree on a color. We'll agree on red as the front, because that's what I did when I was lecturing before. We'll agree as blue is going to be the top, okay? And green will be the right side view. Random choices, no real reason. You can use hot pink, I don't care. Or, or hot, what would we call this, hot pink? <laughs> so here's red. Everything that's in the front view that will appear in the front view, we make, or at least I'm making up here, red. You can choose whatever color you love. Okay, this will extract to the front view. The other object that look, that looks, you see how this is, this object is also parallel with this object back here. So this will also appear in the front view. Those two shapes. Okay. Now the top view is whatever I see from up here. So that will be this. Now notice I'm avoiding the hole because a hole is a hole. It's through the part, it's not solid. You will draw a circle, of course, but the object itself is, is, is through. See that? Okay. What will also be visible in the top view is this and this slanted face over here. Okay. And a piece of this curve, not the whole thing, because you'll notice it ends right about here. Only a piece of it. Now, one of the things to appreciate that even though it looks round, it's got a slight curvature here, in the actual drawing it won't. It'll just be a straight line. Why? Because it's like a tape. Like, see a tape measure? I'm sorry, a uh, roll of tape? It's round. When I look at the top of it, it's a rectangle. <clears throat> purely at the top of it. It looks like a rectangle. Now the right side view is over here, and that's green. Now here's what's interesting. You know, a piece of this is visible on this side, right? On the top, but it, a piece of it is also visible in the right side view. So these colors end up getting blended because a, this corner is actually visible in two different views. Okay. You don't show distinct lines for that. You just realize that's the case. 
from the project we had before this one, <clears throat> you knew to extract that view. So now I'm making the outline. See that? And you'll also remember from that lecture the fact that if I have a hole, what do you have to do with this hole? You have to show it as hidden lines. The way to do that is you first have to carry, I'll make it black, you'll have to carry your lines over in alignment with this perspective so you know where that is. That way when you draw your vertical lines, you nail it exactly where it's supposed to go. And of course, don't forget it's center line. Got it? Now, <clears throat> the front view, I'm sure I have the right color pencil, is right here. But you notice you've got this angled feature here. And that ends right there. And I'm aligning this, and it ends right there. So this feature is right there, that angled feature. So now I'm exaggerating the thick the line so you can see it. You start developing that side. Remember it curves here. So it curves there. And you have a curve there. But you don't quite know what it looks like. So in this view it's it's you just kind of have a little swipe there. But that's roughly, I know that's bad drawing. That's because I'm trying to really emphasize the lines. Now, what am I missing? No, no, what am, in the front, what am I missing? It's the same thing I did on the right side. I got to show my hole. Oh, you got it. So you go here, go here. That way, you show the hole over here as hidden lines. And through the center. Okay? Then you have your top view. And that one now you gotta carry the lines up. Okay, that's where this object ends. This way. And this view is relatively oh, I used the wrong color. I'm supposed to use blue. Sorry about that. Here's blue. You've got the top of the object. You carried these lines up here. And then the circle gets carried up there, too. And that one, too, is going to be interesting. It's like, how do you do that? Well, I'm a little lazy, so I'm going to actually use this as my reference. So I can kind of box it in back here, kind of. I'm going to use this guy as my reference to go up and across so I can kind of make a box. So that way I see that my object is there. But this is in, all in perspective, guys, when you look at that. That's what that looks like. Down here, though, you draw it flat, which is much easier because all you're doing is the horizontal lines. Once you have this rough idea here, then all you got to do is figure out scale. What scale am I going to use? I'm lazy, so I'm going to do the following. For those of, those of you that ever worked with a map or anything, a physical map, not Google map, I know that my boxes are that size. I don't care to take a ruler to it. I just know that it's that size, so I marked off that information. So now I'm going to go against my object here and say how many steps over does it take to make this thing? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. And I put that in there. It's eight boxes long. That is the unit of measurement we're using. So over here, when we draw our front view, let's say we start it down here. 
we go across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. So it's eight boxes long. That's just the, fr the line that represents the front, this front line. Now the height is two boxes tall. So it's two boxes tall. I'm taking this very slowly. Personally, I would probably check all the boxes before I start drawing, but I'm doing it slowly for the kit, for the sake of this um, this video. The hole, one, two, three, one, two, so it's three over is where the first hidden line is. Remember, those are dashes. And then two more for the second hidden line. And then my center line is right there because it's a hole. If it's a hole, it's got a center line. If you don't show a center line, that means it might be a through slot, just a, like an opening. You don't know what it is. <clears throat> now on the back side here, when I try to check the height, I'm going to do it off the back because it's a cleaner number, or I, I can see it more clearly. One, two, three, yeah, it looks like it's four up. One, two, three, four, four boxes up from the bottom. So it's one, two, three, four boxes up. So that's where the arc starts. That's the, the flat ends here. The flatness, the side wall ends there. How about this side? Back here, one, it's also two. So this ends here as well. This is why you need your, your board supplies because this makes it so much easier if you have a board. It's very hard if you don't. Then across here, it's one, two, three, four. So it's four across as far as one, two, three, four across as far as where the angle ends. But what's the final height? That's another two squares. One, two. So that, as I like to say, X marks the spot. That's where this ends. Two squares up, four squares over, based on assessing, using my scale. My scale. This is my scale that I'm using. This is based on the grid that I have in front of me. That's the scale I'm using. Okay? Across, now we go back here. One, it looks like it's two, two boxes in. This is where a compass is very, very useful. Uh, I don't do circles that well. <clears throat> so if I had a compass, I would use it. If I don't have a compass, I have a roll of tape. I know, it's cheesy. This is actually the wrong diameter. So I can't do this. But I do have something called a French curve. They call these. Okay? And that allows me a little bit of latitude. Not all kits have French curves. It's not perfect. It really needs to be a half circle. So, of course, I'm, um, I'm having a conniption up here because I really want a half circle. But I don't see a compass in here. Is there a compass? Somebody have a compass? Right there. I yeah. really want a compass. <laughs> nope, that's, that's a protractor. It's the triangle looking thing with a little tip on it right there. Compass. Okay? May have used it in geometry class. Now you really need it. Now, when you use a compass, we know the center is here because it's a two by two square. I like to put a little piece of tape down because there's this, this pointy end right here that you stick in there. If you use tape, it'll stay there better. Now, this one really moves. So you got to be delicate with this one because I can actually squeeze this, which is bad, but that's okay. So what you do is you locate where that compass is going to go, extend it out to the end part of one side, and then you tilt a little bit. You see how I'm slowly going? I'm doing this intentionally just so for the sake of the video. You, some people like twirl really fast. I can't. But you hold it at the top, that's the best place to hold it, and you just slowly make the mark. When you get faster, you can, you can twirl, but I want to show you that it's okay to be slow. There's nothing against that, okay? And that is really what the half circle looks like. Voila. And then if you take your tape out, okay, 
Okay, go ahead and, and because it's a curve, what should you put in there? Center lines, right? Because otherwise, voila, you don't know that it's actually round. And that's what the front view looks like, the formal looking version of it. You have the center mark and you have your references there. This is here. Now, you'll notice that I was a little off a little bit when I drew this line. Now, the right side view, this is where we were talking in the last class of how you project your lines across. Remember that conversation with projecting lines? Save a lot of time. Just go ahead and project the lines across. This information's already there. We don't need to redraw it. Whoops. This information's, uh-oh, we tilted our paper bags. So. This information is already here. For some reason, this is moving. All right, let's get this, all right, there we go. The height of this is here already, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel. The only thing we really need to know is how deep is it, and what is this width? We take our scale, literally, what we're using as our scale. One, two, yeah. It's roughly two, so we're just going to make it two deep. So what's this one? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six boxes in, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how, that's the back wall. So that's just vertical. And it's two squares in. And that's it. That's your right side view. Once you have it drawn, you want to, you can use your eraser shield. So when you erase the little corners, that whatever you overlap on, you're not going to erase the, wipe out the literal corner of the drawing. You don't want to do that. Right there. Protect the corners. Protect the corners as you erase. Protect that corner. And that one's almost like a curve you're protecting there. See? Then that's the right side, <clears throat> which is a backwards L. This keeps moving. Get painter's tape. Where Raphael is. She needs to get painter's tape. Sometimes drafting tape is a little too delicate because it won't stick. Okay, push a little harder on the tape. There. Now you notice I didn't put in the hole. Because I didn't measure where it is. <laughs> so it looks like it's one square in. We know it's two squares deep from, from the front view. So I know that the other spot for the hidden lines is over here. And there's your center line. You want to darken up the outline of the object by just going over the lines like two or three times. That'll increase that shape because you want your view, especially the outline, you want it to pop. You want it to pop on the page. See how that pops? Okay. Now what's nice is in the future you're not going to use a grid. It'll be much easier to work without a grid, but for now we got a grid. Now the top view, Exactly the same method for the madness. You'll notice how I'm counting less and less. You notice that? Because what am I doing? I'm using the views of the object that I already have to make my other object. I'm going to go across. Now, remember the miter method? I'll call it the miser method because it's, it, it makes you work faster, cheaper. Get it? Hence the word miser. So that 45 degree angle, remember that? From the last last lecture we had? When I draw that 45 degrees, guess what I have? I have a square. Yes, you're right. <laughs> what do I also have? Oh, for some reason it's a little off. Let me see. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six by six. So it should be a six by six square. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got that one. I was expecting it to stop there. For some reason it's not. That's probably because I'm imperfect. But if you draw a 45 degree line, 
it'll actually come out beautiful. And then what that does, it helps you define the outline of your top of your object. Top, sides. And we know this is two squares in. So it's two squares in. We'll make that nice and thick. This is the outer perimeter over here, outer perimeter over here, okay? This, there's a line right there, so that's where that line goes. So the only thing missing in this view is what? The circle. You got it. Yeah. Good. He was quiet, but he did say it. I heard him. You may not have heard it in the video, but my, my student did say it. Ivan said it. <laughs> so now I'm going to brace the little corners off. Okay, see that? Now the circle, again, that's what the template's for, but I still need to know where to draw it. So I always need my center lines. Now, if it wasn't clear where it was, that's where this guy comes in. Because if I carry my line up and carry my line across, that's how you know where its center is. See? That's what this, this helps you do develops your lines. It can go up and across, or you can go across and down. Doesn't matter. Either way works. And then now back to my little piece of tape, which of course I did not get rid of because your teacher is cheap. <laughs> I get rid of nothing. <laughs> All right. And I, the biggest thing you have to be careful about is making sure your little piece of tape isn't so big that your circle is on the tape, because then when you remove the tape, guess what else goes away? Your circle. So sometimes you might have to use a circle template versus a compass to draw your circles because the circles you're trying to draw are too small. Templates are available online on anybody's, um, yeah, this is almost too small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the artistic approach and just do half arcs. And that's okay in the beginning because the, the circle is almost too small for this particular compass that I have. And, there, and online, if you look, you'll find out that there's all types of compasses out there, all different sizes for this very reason. Because this is okay on a piece of paper, but I might be doing a layout actually on a piece of metal, whatever it is, etchings. They make really tiny parts, so... This compass would be too big for that kind of job. They make tiny versions of, of this compass. There you go. So what we have here is the, oh, we're missing one thing. See, this line is here, but it's not here, right? It's behind something, so it's a hidden line over there. So don't, there's a hidden line there that's carried from this corner. Because this is third angle projection, okay? And front view, right view, top view with the miter corner so I could extract some data, develop my views. Did you notice how I was counting for here? I counted a little bit here, but did I do any counting up here? Zero, because I was able to pull the information off my other two views. That's how you draw efficiently. Whether it's on AutoCAD, by hand drawing, I don't care. You can draw very efficiently if you use your views to develop each of them, okay? That ends this lecture.